Episode 3, Who Really Called Vallejo Police Department? In his 1986 book, Zodiac, Robert Graysmith claims that the so-called Zodiac Killer made taunting phone calls to police in Vallejo and Napa following two of the attacks. According to the Zodiac myth, the Vallejo phone call relayed information to the police which could only have been known by the killer. Supposedly, the caller said, I want to report a double murder. If you will go one mile east on Columbus Parkway to the public park, you will find the kids in a brown car. They were shot with a 9mm Luger. I also killed those kids last year. Goodbye. The first thing we notice is that the caller seems to think that police have not yet responded to the shooting at Blue Rock Springs Park. The second thing we notice is that the caller can't make up his mind if he did the shooting or if he's just reporting a shooting. Even more confusing, Vallejo Police Department apparently told the media two different versions of this phone call in the days following the shooting. The first version, reported in the Vallejo Times-Herald the next day, says that the caller said, I shot them. I used a 9mm automatic. Two days later, the morning of July 7th, the Vallejo Times-Herald reported a slightly different version of the phone call. I shot them. I used a 9mm Luger automatic. What's interesting is, the evening of July 7th, the Vallejo News Chronicle, a newspaper owned by the same publisher, Gibson Publications, published a completely different version of the phone call. In this version of the phone call, the caller supposedly stated, I want to report a double murder. If you will go one mile east on Columbus Parkway to the public park, you will find the kids in a brown car. They were shot with a 9mm Luger. I also killed those kids last year. What was the source for this second version of the phone call? The next day, July 8th, when operator Nancy Slover reported for work at Vallejo Police Department, her supervisor, Captain Bird, asked her to type up a formal report. To make matters worse, the other police department reports which mentioned the phone call were also typed on July 8th, after the second version of the phone call had been published in the local newspaper. In that report, Slover seems to agree with the second version of the phone call published the evening before by the Vallejo News Chronicle. She does, however, qualify her report by stating, the substance of the statement was as follows. In other words, Slover admits that this is not a verbatim transcription. The original newspaper story of July 5th, with the original version of the phone call, says that the phone call had been traced to a payphone at a Texaco gas station on Springs Road. According to the reports typed July 8th, the phone call was supposedly traced to a Union 76 gas station on Springs Road. The first problem with both of these claims is that the telephone company in Vallejo in 1969 did not have the technology to trace telephone calls made to the police department. In those days, to call the police department from a phone booth, a person first had to dial the operator and ask the operator to connect the call to the police department. The operator would know that the call was coming in from a phone booth, but that was all the information they would have. The operator would ask the caller where they were calling from, and they would have to rely on the caller telling them the truth. There is, of course, one very simple explanation. Two phone calls. One phone call in the first person, I shot them, I used a 9mm. The second phone call from someone who thinks that police have not yet responded to the shooting at the park. In the three days between the incident and the time she typed her report, maybe Nancy Slover simply got the two phone calls confused. But another interesting fact is that neither one of these phone calls conveys information which would be exclusively known by the killer. For example, Blue Rock Springs Park is not one mile east of Vallejo Police Department on Columbus Parkway. However, police at the scene did request a fire truck be sent from the fire station at the corner of Columbus Parkway and Ascot Parkway, which is one mile west of Blue Rock Springs Park. The original dispatch at 12.10 a.m., had sent units to the park to investigate a report of two young people being shot in a brown car. When police arrived at the scene, they found several empty shell casings stamped WW 9mm Luger. They asked the dispatcher to put out an all-points bulletin to be on the lookout for a heavyset man driving a brown car possessing a gun capable of firing 9mm Luger ammunition. In other words, both versions of the phone call simply contain information which had been broadcast over the radio by the police dispatcher. By July of 1969, there were several brands of consumer radios which enabled people to eavesdrop on police and fire broadcasts. But what about the version of the phone call where the caller seems to think police have not even responded to the shooting yet? 
According to the Vallejo Police Department files Gray Smith says he based his book on, a phone call was made at just about 12.40 a.m. from a person who called because he thought Vallejo police had not yet responded to the shooting. The first phone call to police at 12.10 a.m. came from the three kids who discovered Mike and Darlene in the park. At the time, they were worried that Nancy Slover hadn't taken their call seriously. Deborah's brother-in-law, Bob, was an off-duty Vallejo police officer. The kids decided to drive to his house and ask him to call Vallejo police. However, there's an even bigger lie Robert Graysmith tells about this so-called taunting phone call to Vallejo police. 